loving God, we give thanks for the men of virtue who have touched our lives, those who have shown us kindness, courage, generosity, truth, compassion, faith, and love. Bless all sons and brothers and fathers and grandfathers who reveal a glimpse of your loving presence on earth. Amen.
Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Cherie Forrett here at Trinity Church in Beaver Dam, and I'm so glad to welcome you to worship this morning. Throughout this season, we'll be reclaiming our roots as God's people in prayer, in song, and through scripture stories that remind us who we really are as God's people and where we come from as we look at those scripture stories. By now, I hope you've received your newsletter as well, because in that, it contains some information about safety precautions we'll be using when we return to worship here in the sanctuary, and also some opportunity for you to give input by way of a survey that we hope you'll complete as soon as possible and bring back to church and drop off in the container we'll have right outside the door for that. We also have two days coming up this week that we'd invite you to make an appointment to come to church and learn more about the safety precautions we'll be taking. Also take some time to pray with me here in the sanctuary or pick up materials that you might need. Those might be communion elements for communion in July, maybe the materials for our virtual vacation Bible school, compassion camp, or also you could purchase script or you're about to need a new upper room as well. So please give us a call on Monday or Tuesday to make an appointment so we can meet you here. We are your worship hosts this morning, David Sunider. And I'm Kelsey Sunider. If you have any technical difficulty today, remember you can find this recorded service on the website after the service is shared. Watch the service at the time that works best for you and your family. The service will also be broadcast at 11 a.m. on WBEV. If you're listening on the radio broadcast, please give us a call during the week to let us know you listen to the broadcast. Reach us at 920-887-7211. Today, th today's radio broadcast was sponsored by an anonymous donor, as well as Richard Kerner in memory of his brother George and Wilbert, his father. We give thanks to our worship team and our tech crew for helping these online services happen. There's an opportunity to gather online for coffee hour at 1030 via Zoom conferencing. Find the link on our website and we'll see you after the service. Bring your own cup of coffee. You are invited to be part of a Bible study specifically aimed at helping white congregations talk about racism and better understand the dynamics and the concerns all around us. Please get in touch with Pastor Cherie if you'd like to be a part of that study via Zoom in July. We hope to schedule this study when it works best for the people who want to be involved. Please take this time as the service begins to sign in on the form on the website to let us know you're here or comment on Facebook. There's also a worship guide you can download with info about what's going on at Trinity right now. Please greet one another while we listen to Kit play, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
join me for the opening prayer. Eternal God, turn and be gracious to us, for the road is long and we are weary. We feel beaten down by the trials of life and need your strength to sustain us. Show us your favor and offer us your blessing that we may abide in faithfulness and not be put to shame. Comfort us, O God, and revive our souls. Grant us the endurance to take up your cross and follow the difficult roads in life. Amen. For today's special music, we're glad to have a solo by Tom Patterson singing Day by Day. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond a measure Gives us each on day what he deems best Lovingly it's part of pain and pleasure Mingling toil with peace and rest Every day the Lord himself is near me With each mercy for each hour All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me He whose name is Counselor and Power The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As my days thy strength shall be in measure, this thy pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation So to trust thy promises, O Lord That I lose not faith's sweet consolation Offered me within thy holy word Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting Ere to take as from a father's hand One by one the days, the moments fleeting Till I reach the promised land Tis the pledge made by God. So glad we found new ways to have these regular events that we rejoice in in the life of the church. We'll be receiving a class of new members today new members who have come to know Trinity over the Zoom experience of worship, new members that were here with us even before we needed to go only to online worship. So their faces may be familiar to you, but I'm so glad we can welcome them as Trinity members this day. Friends, we're gathered here today and are glad to welcome some some folks who wish to affirm their baptism by uniting with our household of faith. We have here with us today, Mark Benton, Sarah Jane Anderson, and Tyler and Bryce Korth. We're so glad to have everybody gathered up today. And we know that we're all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they've been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism 
and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They're here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts the Holy Spirit has bestowed upon them. And I, I bet they all look kind of familiar to you. We'll take some time for them to introduce themselves at the end of the liturgy here. But in the meantime, I have some questions for them to answer first. All right, new members. As the members of Christ Church Universal, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. I will. Good job. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. So now I say to the assembled members of the household of God of Trinity, Trinity Church, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith confirm their hope and perfect them in love. Will you endeavor to provide a supportive community to these persons that, that may, they may grow in the knowledge and love of God through Jesus Christ, our savior. Whereupon the people will say, we give thanks for all that God has already given you and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, may you God of all grace, who's called us here, establish us and strengthen us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, may you live in grace and peace in all of our hearts and in our lives. Amen. 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 And now it would be a lovely thing to have our new members introduce themselves and say anything they'd like to to greet the congregation. I wonder, because Mark will actually be married by the time everybody's watching this. If we can include Beth in this, too. <laughs> That's so exciting. Yes, it's a very fun, fun week here overall. There. Oh, Mark, hello. <laughs> Mark, do you want to go first? Okay, my name's Mark Benton, and this is my fiance, future wife in two days, Beth Shep. She's already a member of the church, but I'm going to be a member. We are so glad to have you joining as well, and... My gosh, you'll be man and wife by the time the congregation is here. <laughs> oh, who'd like to go next? We can go. So I'm Tyler, and this is Bryce. She's my wife. We got married <laughs> at the start of COVID, so in April. So that was interesting. Um, we're glad that we got to uh, find our church home here in Beaver Dam. We've been here for a year and felt very welcomed and can't wait to see you all in person again. <laughs> Amen to that. Perfect. Sarah Jane. My name is Sarah Jane Anderson, and I've been attending Meth um, Trinity for a couple of years um, when I can around my work schedule, but I've been uh, trying to be active in music with it and other things, and I'm just thrilled to becoming a member of not just Trinity, but of the Methodist Church. Well, we are so glad to have you all with us. Um, consider that we are virtually extending the right hand of Christian fellowship to first shake your hand and then give you a round of applause. <laughs> and I will be delivering new member bags either to you or if you want to swing by church to pick them up next week, we have gifts for you to welcome you. So welcome to Trinity. We're glad to have some time to pray together as a faith community, lifting up all that we carry with us on our hearts throughout each week. We'll take some time now to lift up our hearts with joys and concerns, remembering that God is with us in all the times of our lives. Today's reading from Psalms, which is Psalm 86, begins with, 
Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. So we enter this time of prayer to lift up our hearts to our Lord in the presence of one another and with our God. Let us pray. O oh God, we come to you with hurting hearts for the loss of so much in our lives, for people who are grieving the loss of a loved one or an absence in this time of separation or a difficult diagnosis or an anniversary of a tragedy. Let us hold them in our hearts this day. And for hurting hearts, as this week we marked the five-year anniversary of, on June 17th, of the murder of people now known as the Emmanuel Nine, nine people who were killed as they ended their weekly Bible study at Charleston's African Methodist Episcopal Church, killed because they were black. And we walk together, Lord, as people who also have room in our hearts for hope. We rejoice in all the ways you bring us hope. We acknowledge your presence in a baptism last week. And yesterday, Mark and Beth Benton were united in marriage and covenant with you. And today we rejoice in the new members who affirm their baptism by joining Trinity this day. Our hearts also rejoice when we find ways to spend time with loved ones this Father's Day in this summertime when we find more freedom spending time outdoors. But let us not forget to hold in our prayers people who are undergoing treatment as they battle cancer, people who are nearing the end of their earthly lives now in hospice care along with their loved ones, for all that is on our hearts, Lord, what has been spoken out loud and what is yet unspoken, let us take time now to lift our hearts together to you silently. God, as your children together with our brother Jesus, our Christ, we lift up the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're glad now to share a hymn entitled, God Whose Love is Reigning Over Us. Please join Mike in singing or reflect on the words as we listen together. whose love is reigning o'er us, source of all the ending true. Hear the universal chorus, raised in joyful praise to you. Alleluia, alleluia, worship ancient worship. like children singing, ocean waves like thunderbolt. Alleluia, alleluia, as creation's tale is told. Holy God of ancient glory, choosing man and woman too, Abram's faith and sin. Oh, yeah. 
child born to set us free, sent to heal us, sent to teach us how love's children we might be. Today we hear a story from the lives of Abraham, his wife Sarah, her maiden servant, Hagar and their sons. There is some background for the story we need to be reminded of. Abraham and Sarah had been married for years. They left behind their home. They were obedient to God's direction throughout their lives, but they had been childless for years. When they were past childbearing years, God promised they would have offspring, as many as the stars in heaven. Sarah laughed when she heard that promise but it gave her hope. But when that did not happen immediately, Sarah took matters into her own hands and sent her maidservant Hagar to sleep with Abraham. Hagar became pregnant and gave birth to a son named Ishmael. Ishmael grew strong and healthy and beloved by Abraham. And then came the day that Sarah became pregnant, just as God had promised. She gave birth to a son who was named Isaac, whom his father loved as well. We believe Isaac would have been about three when this incident occurred when Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael into the wilderness. Abraham's son with Hagar may have been as old as 16, but it's easier to envision a younger boy. Hagar and Ishmael thought they were on their own in the wilderness. They thought they were without help. Hagar believed they would die. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman, whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I thought it best to give the sermon right outside of the sanctuary today. Because of the kind of story that it is, I'm just outside of that space where we usually gather feel safe, comfortable, but it doesn't feel the same without you here as well. Today's scripture story takes place 
away from wherever the people in it would normally have worshipped because they had been sent away. They were in the wilderness. And that's where many of our life stories take place, in the wilderness of our lives. That's something for us to think about in these days. We often feel displaced from the sacred spaces of our lives. We're not always able to be in the places that feel familiar to us. We feel like our safety is threatened by what's happening in the world around us. And we long to get back to the places when, where we feel safe and comfortable and protected. Scripture stories like this week's story have a lot to offer us in these times our lives have been disrupted. We can see many things happening in this passage. Abraham's wife, Sarah, felt threatened, perhaps that her son was not the oldest to receive his inheritance. Perhaps she was worried about Abraham not loving her son the best, or maybe even not loving herself the best. We can see that Abraham loved both of his sons, but was caught between their mothers, one a servant and one his wife. Ultimately, Abraham had to trust God with the lives of both of his sons. He could see raising them together would not work, so with God's guidance, he sent Hagar and Ishmael away. They wandered in the desert until they were rescued by God. Maybe the direction from God to send them away becomes slightly less frightening and threatening if we recall that Ishmael wasn't an infant anymore, but possibly as old as 16. When Hagar commends her son and her fears to God, God hears and God answered. Later on in Genesis 22, God will ask Abraham to sacrifice his other son, Isaac, as a burnt offering and sacrifice. In both cases, Abraham obeyed God. In both cases, God interceded to save the life of the son. In this way, Abraham and Sarah's descendants become as numerous as the stars in the heavens, but also Hagar's son as well, because Ishmael becomes the father of all Islam. Isaac's son, Jacob, becomes the father of the 12 tribes of Israel from which all of Judaism will, will, would descend. And Genesis 25 tells us that one day, after, long after this passage, these sons will come back together to bury their father, Abraham, to remember him together and commend his soul to God. It is safe to place people who are most precious to us in God's hands. That doesn't mean abdicating the responsibility we have to care for our loved ones, but it helps us to remember this. In situations that need tough love, or when our relationship is going through a difficult time, or we've done anything, everything that is humanly possible and nothing helps, we can commend our loved ones to God's care. When Hagar did that, God heard and God helped. When we commend our loved ones to God, we're truly letting God guide our next steps. Most often that's how our next steps get us to new places, places we haven't been able to get to by ourselves, places that we can't even imagine on our own. There are many things that are painful to us going on in our world right now. So when we've expended all of our energy agonizing over them, it's time to commend those painful things to God. And when we do that, God hears. So for everyone who's lost a loved one, whether that's because their life was taken from them or because it was simply their time, or that loss is due to a breach in your relationship, it's time to bring that grief to God and say anything you need to say. God has had that same experience and will understand exactly what your heart needs right now. And for anyone who's in grief over the familiar and comfortable things that we're sorely missing right now and feeling far away from the life we had before the pandemic started and uncertain about what's next, 
it's okay to be angry with God about that. Even yell at God on some days and know that God is big enough to take that. God is big enough to take that and keep loving us through that, holding on to us. Even when we feel lost, God doesn't lose us. I'm thinking of my dad on this Father's Day. My dad is famous in our family for both corny jokes and making massive understatements. He often says, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I think we can say the going is tough these days, and for many it's more than tough. But Abraham was only able to get through difficult times and do tough things with God's help. He asked for God's help, and God heard. God answered. In today's story, Hagar and Ishmael were literally displaced from their lives, banished from everything that they knew. But God was with them in the wilderness, and when they asked for God's help, God heard and responded. That's important for us to remember. God hears and responds, even if we don't always understand the response right away. We know we have some challenges ahead with finding our way back to worshiping at church, making covenant with how we'll come back into this space in ways that we'll try to care for everyone's health. I've been asking God's help and guidance for us to find our way together. And I ask you to do the same. When we ask God's help, God hears. Here in Dodge County, we face challenges to, as to how we'll care for the health of our community altogether and the ways we can lift up all people of our community to the life that we expect to be able to have. Let's ask God's help with that in all the days ahead. Because when we ask God's help, God hears and God responds. Amen. May we listen for God's guidance today as we work out how we will support the ministry of Jesus Christ. This is the third Sunday of the month. Each third Sunday, we receive a special offering to alleviate hunger in our community. Your offerings go toward the Dodge County Food Pantry, available to all people in need. Trinity Church can receive gifts on the website via the Donate Now button, through the Giving Plus app by finding our church in our zip code, or by check mailed to 308 Oneida Street, Beaver Dam, 53916. Please share what you can today while Kit plays, take the name of Jesus with you, along with Be Unto Your Name. <laughs>
creation. Receive the gifts of our hands, O God, that they may be signs of your love and grace for a divided world. Through our offerings, help others follow the ways of life. Fill the world with your mercy, Holy One, that your faithful people everywhere will honor you by sharing your kingdom each and every day. Amen. Now please join Mike in singing our final hymn, Loving Spirit, or take this time to reflect on the words. Just a few last announcements to share. Please be sure to join us on the Zoom coffee hour. Email me if you can't find the link for that. And also stay tuned after the postlude for children's time today with Kerry Vinovich. And now we'll share together a litany to honor Father's Day with David and Kelsey. Let's let Kelsey lead us and we'll respond together. For our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. We, we pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. We, we pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us. We, we pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For fathers who have struggled to be a source of strength and have faced significant challenges to maintain relationships with their children, that their faith guide all their interactions and the care within their hearts. We pray, we pray to, to the Lord. God, God in, in your, your wisdom, wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless all who turn to their faith to be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let, Let the example of their strength and love shine forth. Grant that, that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, as we walk through the days ahead, may we know that our God is with us wherever we are and can hear us whatever we have to say. Our God, who loves us, will walk with us always so that we are never alone. Amen. Happy Father's Day.
morning. Today's scripture was from the book of Genesis, and it's a story about Ishmael, who was Abraham's son, and Ishmael's mother, Hagar. Ishmael and Hagar were sent into the desert, to the really, really hot desert. But God promised to watch over Ishmael and his mother. So when they were sent off into the desert, Abraham made sure they were sent off with a little bit of food and water. And they were wandering in the desert until their water was gone. Hagar found a shady bush and she put her son under there, who was not doing well. He was probably really dehydrated and hot and really, really weak. When she put him under the bush, then she sat down and she started to cry. She was scared of being all alone in the desert without any water. She was scared for herself and she was scared for her son, Ishmael. But God sent an angel calling Hagar from the sky. And he said, what's the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. So God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well of water. So she ran to the well and filled up her container. When I think about this story, I think about how God must have loved hearing Hagar and Ishmael's prayers. God wants us to talk to him about everything, especially when we're scared and feeling alone. God hears us when we pray, and we can thank God for all that he gives us and provides for us. We can pray for other people like our family and our friends, people who are sick or hurt. And we can pray for ourselves and ask for God's help. When we're, we're scared, lonely, or sad, we can talk to God and we should because he will always hear us and he wants to hear from us. So today we're going to make a classic camp craft. This is called a God's Eye. Um, so these are a couple that I made. So this is something that you can kind of look at and help remember that God is always looking after you and listening to your prayers. He's always there for you no matter what. No matter what kind of situations we're in, he's always there for us. So here is one that I made. And this one is one that can be hung. So what you're going to need for this project is just... Um, some kind of sticks I used. I made a few different ones. I made a really, really small one with toothpicks and smaller thread. I used um, some craft sticks. Or you could even go out to your yard and pick some sticks and use those. Um, I used yarn. I also used some um, embroidery floss. So any kind of material like that is going to work. Uh, what you're going to do first is you're going to take whatever two sticks you have. Um, they could even be pencils if you have extra pencils lying around. And you can glue them together to make it easier, or you can just pinch it tight when you start. Um, once you start wrapping, everything will tighten up and hold together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, my stick, I'm going to take my, um, my yarn, and I'm just going to hold this on the back of one of my um, pieces. And then I'm just going to wrap it around one stick, when I come do that, then I'm going to come back to this next stick over and I'm going to wrap it once around there. I'm going to turn this a little bit. I'm going to wrap it around the next one. Turn it, wrap it around the next one. And I'm just going to keep going. And as you kind of see, you can once you start going, it makes a kind of diamond shape. Pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. The hardest part is making sure just to hold your stick and rotate it while you're um, using your yarn. So this is what the back looks like when you're wrapping it. And then you just keep going until um, it's the size that you want it. Obviously, the bigger your cross, the bigger that your God's eye is going to be. Um, so you just keep going there. That's how this is so far. So here is one. I made another one. And again, like I said, this one here, this really little one, I made out of toothpicks. These would be really cute if you um, put a little magnet on the back. Then you could put it on your refrigerator or on your little memo board, whatever you want to do. So this is just kind of to help you to know that God is always with you. 
He's always listening to you. He's always taking care of you. 